in the last stream, we were working on setting up automation so that all of the different honeycombs that we're producing from all of our different resourceful bees can be processed automatically by these centrifuges. We went ahead and set up a couple of modular routers to automatically pull all of the honeycombs and shoot them across here. We then set up this distributor module to distribute those honeycombs amongst all of these centrifuges. And then we also set up this modular router with another distributor module that pulls all of the resources after they've been processed by the centrifuges and places them into this chest here. And as you can see, for the most part, this has been working quite well since the end of the last stream. Now, currently, this is not working. And the reason for that is that each one of these is full to the brim with honey. Between streams, I did a few times grab a bucket, empty out the honeycomb and craft it into bottles and then craft the bottles into blocks. And so we should have, yeah, quite a few honey blocks in our chests here. But going forward, that's not really a sustainable option because I don't really want to have to do this manually every single time. Instead, what we should be able to do is we should be able to make the congealer here from resourceful bees. And if we pipe all of the honey into that congealer, it's gonna automatically turn all of our liquid honey into blocks of honey that we can then use going forward. The good news is that we can use these blocks of honey not only to make more honey glass, which is gonna be a bonus, but we can also craft the blocks of honey back into bottled honey, which we can then craft into bucket honey if we actually need more liquid honey for crafting more of these nectar blocks, which I think we definitely are going to do because one of the things that we're also going to want to work on in today's stream is getting even more bees to get even more resources. Before we do any of that though, you'll notice that between streams, I have done a little bit of base work. I've built another slightly wider platform over here for our kind of main stuff. I've moved a lot of the stuff that we had over on the old platform over to this platform. Everything is basically the same as it was before. The smeltery here, for example, hasn't changed. All of our uh, Tinker's Construct stations are all the same. They're just a little bit more organized than they were previously. I did go ahead and make some more tempered glass jars and some more auto processing jars to replace the ones that we stole in the last episode to set up our automatic lava. And then finally, I did also throw down a bucket of lava underneath the tempered glass jar here for regular heat because it is four times faster than like the regular heat. And I think it's also like eight times faster than the campfire that we were using previously. So now making nectar blocks should be substantially quicker than it was before. Everything else here, is exactly the same. And what I've also done is I've compacted down all of our storage into these two chests. So I think this chest on the left is the one we had previously. This one over on the right is a new one that I've made. I think one of these is slightly bigger than the other because I didn't quite calculate how many uh, upgrades I'd need. But of course, at some point, the hub is that both of these will be completely maxed out in terms of space. And if we need more space, we can just add more of these compact chests. The only thing that I haven't done between streams is actually connect these up to our simple storage network, which means right now over here, this shows nothing because there's currently nothing connected. And so real quick, I think the first thing that we should do right at the start of today's stream is craft up a little bit more network cable and then run this all the way over. We should also grab some link cable, which we do have in here. And if we do something like this, one and two, uh, right now, I don't think we have much link cable at all. So we should probably also go ahead and do something like this and like this, which is actually the other way around. Is it like this? No, there's no way that was right. Hold on. Oh, I see. It's just missing uh, iron in the middle. Perfect. Cool. 16 should be fine. I do want this to go kind of one block further down. I don't want to have it just embedded in the floor. I want it under the platform so we don't really see it. And so to make that work, we probably want to get a little bit of water. And with that water, we should be able to do something like this and then from there we should be able to go back to the surface and just kind of run that all the way along until it's connected up to the link cable cool once that's connected up we can go ahead and fill all this in we are going to need some more stone because we did lose some to the void there but thankfully it's just chiseled stone and we're going with dent fantastic so now that that is all connected up we can now access all of our items from inside of the simple storage network once again. I would like to sort by amount. You'll see I have been taking quite a few honeycombs out of the system, again, because right now we're just making too many of them and they start to overflow on the ground like this, which is not ideal. And so let's try and fix that problem once and for all. To do that, as I mentioned, we want to get the honey congealer, thankfully super easy to make. We also want to get some fluid pipes. These are going to allow us to very easily move fluid around. 
And in order to configure these, we do need a wrench and the wrench is gonna require some flint. Flint is just gravel, which thankfully we have an infinite amount of. And so if we grab that pipe wrench, what we should be able to do is we should be able to extract from all of these centrifuges and pump into this congealer. So what I think I'll do here is I think I'll do a similar thing to what we've just done with the network cable. I think we'll run it under the platform and I think we'll also connect it kind of under each one of the centrifuges just to make it look that little bit nicer. And then I'm also fairly certain that what we should be able to do from there is take our distributor module and just add this to the setup. What that should do is it should mean that any honey blocks that are made by the congealer should also get pulled into this chest ready for us to pull into their own storage drawers. The only slightly tricky part about this, again, just like before, is uh, getting under the platform to connect these up. But just like we did last time, it should be a case of just grabbing a bucket of water and dipping down there. And then all we have to do really is grab our wrench and shift right click at the connection point between the centrifuge and the pipe. You'll see by default at the top there, it says fluid pipe from pipes. Once you've shift right clicked, it changes to transferring 50 millibuckets every tick. So we're basically setting these to extract because by default, they are just set to insert, which is what's going on over here. We want to leave that set to insert. And then we're almost certainly going to need at least one more set of pipes for this to actually work. Thankfully, we have quite a bit of redstone and iron now. Those are kind of the main bees that we have. And so back over here, all we should have to do is run this kind of across and down to here. I do want to make sure that we kind of do that last because we really want to connect all of these up first. Can I reach all the way to the edge? I think the answer is yes, but we want to try and do it ideally without falling into the void. Nice, okay, cool. So let's do this and then back up here, we can do this, cool. And look at that, this is filling up with honey and it very quickly turns all of that honey into honey blocks. Nice. Now I can't help but noticing that it is not extracting the honey blocks into, oh no it is, cool. I think that's just a, a speed problem with the modular router. It can only pull so many items at a time. And so when there's a lot of stuff to pull, it uh, has to make a decision about what it pulls first. That again is something that we should be able to fix if we get some speed upgrades. The speed upgrades were kind of the bane of our lives in the last episode, because in order to get the speed upgrades, we need blaze rods and blaze rods are not currently something that we have access to. However, I think that we should be able to get access to them fairly easily in today's stream if we get started with a little bit of Batania, because looking at the recipe for blaze powder, we can get blaze powder by putting mana powder into a mana pool and mana powder is just dye. And of course we can get infinite dye from our mystical petals, which we can then get an infinite amount of by just running near them and shearing them. So mana powder, super easy to get. And it's a very, very small amount of mana required for the blaze powder. Once we have blaze powder, we can then use that blaze powder to get blaze DNA. Again, much like with the Enderman, this is not gonna get us a blaze B. Unfortunately, it is gonna get us an actual blaze, but we can kill those blazes to get blaze rods. And I think hopefully in today's stream, we should be able to get a blaze B. This is a combination of a redstone B and a pigman B. And once we get a blaze B, we're also going to want to get a blaze B nectar block. And this blaze B nectar block does require two of these blaze meshes, which is 18 blaze rods in total. So we're gonna have to spawn in quite a few blazes to get enough blaze rods to then get infinite blaze rods from our blaze B. At least that's kind of part of the plan, but that is getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. I think before we get started on that, there are other bees that I would like to get. For example, a steel bee is also on my list of bees to get today because the steel bee is of course going to allow us to generate infinite steel and steel is useful because right now we're using these standard centrifuges, but there is a multi-block centrifuge that we can make that can process multiple honeycombs at a time. And not only that, but it can process each honeycomb faster than the current centrifuges that we have. And so if we can get the centrifuge controller and quite a lot of centrifuge casing, I believe it's a three by three by four multi-block. So we would need 36 blocks in total, which is 35 centrifuge casing and the centrifuge controller. The centrifuge casing here requires a wanks machine block. The wanks machine block requires a steel block and that steel block of course requires steel. So steel is on my list of bees to get as well. This one should be slightly easier, I think, because it's just an iron bee and a coal bee. The coal bee is kind of the first bee that I want to try and get today. For that, we need a wood bee and a lava bee. So the wood bee, we should already have in the system. We do. 
The larva bee is thankfully another one of those bees that we can just get via DNA. So we just need a thousand millibuckets of lava and some empty DNA. Do we have any empty DNA? Of course we don't, that would be far too easy. Thankfully, we do have an abundance of clay. I'm just gonna take the one for now and put it in over here because I don't wanna make an excess of lava bees. Instead, we can do that. And if we quickly grab a bucket, we can also do something like this. I was gonna take lava from over there, but all of our lava is over here currently. And we do wanna make sure we pull from one of these that ideally has at least one bucket of lava in it, which unfortunately none of them do currently. I think that's due to the fact that all of these are set to off. That's kind of another problem that we run into. The other problem we run into is the fact that these will make lava indefinitely, but if they ever get to a point where there's nowhere to send the lava, they spew out those lava canisters and then they stop making lava, which is not ideal. And I don't know, I don't think that these pipes work on a nearest first basis. So we could throw down like a fluid trash can to delete excess lava, but given that these don't work on a nearest first basis, I think if we tried to do that, we would end up in a situation where we were just kind of deleting more lava than we were making, which is not ideal. Either way, once we have a bucket of lava, back over here, we should be able to throw that lava down into one of our glass jars. I do need to get some more cast iron tubing to connect those up. And so let's quickly do one of these and one of these, whoops, one of these. Might as well connect them all up whilst we are here. And then hopefully we should now be able to get our lava bee DNA over in here. So can I make our first lava bee? We can. Then to breed the lava bee with the wood bee, we need four cobblestone and a standard log of any kind. And that's actually not too bad. That gets us a coal bee. It's probably worth setting up a, uh, a little apiary section or a little section inside of our uh, bee apartment over there for our coal bee so we can get unlimited coal going forward. But then the steel really shouldn't be too difficult. It's just a case of waiting for that coal bee to grow up and then we can breed it with an iron bee to get steel bees. And at that point, steel should be fairly straightforward. Again, the only thing that we have to worry about is the uh, coal bee nectar block. This requires lava honeycomb and wood honeycomb. So wood honeycomb shouldn't be too difficult to get. Lava honeycomb, gonna be a little bit trickier to get, I guess. What does the lava bee pollinate on? It pollinates on lava wood, which I assume is wood that we pull lava over using the smeltery. It totally is, look at that, 100 millibuckets of wood and a plank. Okay, that is completely fine. Let me get another bucket. Let's quickly see if we can't steal another bucket's worth of lava out of one of these magmatic dynamos, we totally can. And then if we go and right click that onto one of our smeltery drains, that places the lava into the smeltery. From there, we should be able to grab a standard oak plank. And if we place that oak plank into our casting basin, we can then pull the lava over that oak plank to make us lava wood. Nice. So now over here, we should have our lava BNA. We do. And currently, our bee spawning apparatus is still bank over on this side of the base. You'll see there is still some stuff over here. Uh, there is still some stuff to be moved, like all of this. And uh, I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do yet with our uh, seed or generator. I don't really think this needs to be a permanent fixture of the base. But uh, what we should do here is we should get our wood bee and our lava bee, I think, over inside of this bee breeding area. We'll then breed the coal bee, and then we'll probably move the lava and the wood bee over to the other area over to the apartments, at least temporarily, so that we can start collecting uh, the wood and lava honeycombs. So let's do this, and then let's quickly grab ourselves four cobblestone and one oak log. So the oak log we have, and cobblestone we should have in abundance. We'll take one, two, three, four. Not usual that you have to spend multiple resources in getting a beta breed, so I'm quite interested as to how this is gonna work, but one, two, three, four. He loves it, and boom. And that should be, no pun intended, a Colby. Nice, okay, cool. So now that we have the Colby, in terms of getting the Blaze Bee, we need a Redstone Bee and a Pigman Bee. The Pigman Bee is gold and nether. Nether is obsidian and lava. Obsidian is lava and water. That's actually fine. Again, I think that water is another bee. Whoops, hello, my friend. I think water is another bee that we can just make using our jars. And then we'll probably want to make at least one, maybe two more lava bees real quick so that we can do the breeding in a somewhat small period of time. Because if we don't, we're gonna have to wait for this guy to, uh, to finish his breeding cooldown, which could take a while. Okay, so not too long later, we've made a water BNA, the same as the lava, just water and the empty DNA. And we've also made two more lava bees as well. So in terms of breeding the water bee together with the lava bee to make that obsidian bee, the water bee just takes leaves. Interesting, okay, so I'll take 
a standard Minecraft leaf, and I'll also take another four cobblestone for the lava bee here. Once we have the obsidian bee, we would then need to breed the obsidian bee with another lava bee to get a nether bee. And that obsidian bee does require obsidian to breed, and so we are gonna have to make some obsidian. Thankfully, obsidian is not too difficult to make. It should just be a case of taking water and putting it into our smeltery here with the lava, and you'll see that it does start to make obsidian quite quickly. And then hopefully from there, we can just extract that obsidian down into the casting basin. And it looks like we don't quite have enough obsidian in there, unfortunately, which makes sense. I think it's one bucket of lava and one bucket of water makes one block of obsidian. So we are gonna have to put more lava in here. And unfortunately that does mean we're always gonna end up with a slightly odd amount of lava and now also a slightly odd amount of obsidian as well, because we don't have quite a full blocks worth in there. Either way, we do now have our first block of obsidian, which I believe can also be used later on to make the obsidian bee nectar block as well. So getting more obsidian really shouldn't be uh, too difficult for us. Either way, back over here, let's see if we can't get some bees going. So I'm gonna put down the water bee, uh, which of course, Isaac, you're for, you have to do that over here. We should probably move this. The fact that we're doing all of our, oh no, I'll leave this here because we might want to use this later on today for blaze. So let me go ahead and take our empty jar. We'll do this and we'll do this. I should probably get some more jars as well. It'll save me running backwards and forwards quite so much. But uh, here, we're gonna throw down our water bee. I assume you're still on cooldown, although maybe not actually. Can I do one, two, three, four? I totally can. And over here, we can do one. Perfect. That should get us our first obsidian bee. Again, we're mostly just waiting for that guy to grow up. And then once he grows up, we can then look at getting the nether bee, which will allow us to get the pigment bee. Cool. So whilst we wait for those bees to grow, I think that it's gonna be in our best interest here to start with a little bit of Batania. Also, real quick, actually, before I do any of that, let me get one of my lava bees and at least one of our bee jars here so that we can start making the lava honeycomb because we're gonna want that lava honeycomb, as we saw earlier, for the nectar blocks. So I'll also do the same with wood as well. We'll put down a wood bee somewhere and we'll put down a lava bee somewhere inside of our little apartment building so that we can start getting both of those combs. Okay, so both of these guys are down, they're both spinning, they're both gonna pollinate and produce nectar for us, that is fantastic. So, as I was saying, I think we want to get started with a little bit of Batania so that we can get that blaze. So to do that, we need a couple of things. The first thing that we need is some white petals. We need four specifically. Of course, we can get more from the uh, the flowers and from the tall flowers. It's pretty easy to get those petals. And then we need a petal apothecary. The petal apothecary here is going to allow us to turn those petals into specific flowers from Batania. So we want to take this and we'll place it down for now, I think, over here by the sink, just because it's going to be easy for us to get water from that sink and put it into the petal apothecary. From there, the very first flower that we want to make is the pure daisy. And I did just spend some of our white petals making that petal apothecary, which is not what I intended to do. Thankfully though, we do have more of them. Basically over here, if you drop four white petals into the petal apothecary, one, two, three, four, you can then drop in a standard Minecraft seed and that will get you a pure daisy. It is almost certainly gonna be in our best interest to get at least two of these pure daisies, just because they do take a little bit of time to function. And so let's do the same thing again. We'll take this, we'll put it in here. With Batania, you can normally double right click and it will drop in the same recipe that you did last time with the petal apothecary. And so if you have the right petals in your inventory, you can double right click with an empty hand on a petal apothecary that has water in it. And then you can just drop the seed in and it will make the flower. Pretty nifty stuff. Now that we have that, we want to grab some logs and we want to grab some stone. I think we do want regular stone, which thankfully we've got quite a large amount of because of the fact that we figured out that we can smelt like triple compressed cobblestone, which is pretty good. And now back over here, all we have to do is throw down the pure daisy. And then in the eight blocks surrounding that pure daisy, it is now capable of transforming blocks and fluids into other blocks and fluids. For example, if we throw down the logs, you'll see the particle effect. And in the next 90 seconds, it will transform all of those logs from regular wood into living wood. And over here, it will transform the regular stone into living stone, which is what we need in order to make our first mana pool. We need uh, five of this living rock, sorry, not living stone. That will get us a mana pool. And we also need to get ourselves a mana spreader, this guy right here, in order to move mana into the mana pool. And then the final piece of the puzzle is getting some kind of mana generating flower so that we can produce mana and send it into the mana pool. 
For that, we have a couple of options, but I think, as the quest book suggests here, the end off lane is going to be our best bet for the early game. This is basically like a standard uh, fuel generator. You put fuel into it, and it will produce mana. Pretty easy. It's uh, two mystical brown petals with one light gray petal and one red petal. Over here, you'll see the living wood is done. We can go ahead and harvest that. I'll put down some more here just in case we need it. And over on the other side, you can see the living rock is also done. We'll go ahead and harvest that. And again, we'll put down some more, uh, whoops, not the wood. I want to put down some more stone, again, because we're almost certainly going to need it. And of course, you can make as many of those pure daisies as you like to really speed up the entire process. We do want to keep an eye on these baby bees. In fact, if I put down an obsidian block here, that uh, obsidian bee should start getting distracted i think oh no it won't get distracted because that's not how that works isaac the uh, the obsidian bee it pollinates on the obsidian um nectar block that's um bad because i can't pick up that obsidian now that's um that's my bad either way back over here let's do this to get the mana pool let's see if we don't have some light gray petals we do we just need the one do we have any red petals we do we just need the one and do we have any brown petals we do we just need two if we take all of those just like we did a second ago for the pure daisy, we can do the same thing again here, but with two brown, one red, and one light gray. Again, with a seed, that gets us an end of flame. That's where the double clicking becomes particularly useful because some of the more complex recipes, it's just easier to be able to double click to drop the same recipe in over and over again, instead of having to do it manually. And so now we just need to see about getting this mana spreader. It looks pretty doable, easy. And then what we should also look at getting is a wand of the forest. The wand of the forest is kind of like the wrench of Batania, and it's going to make it a lot easier for us to configure certain stuff going forward. Thankfully, our second batch of living rock and living wood is ready to go. And so let's quickly harvest this, and let's also harvest this. And I'll throw down a bit more oak here. I'll throw down the last two that I have. I don't know if we're going to need that much more living wood to get our basic Batania system up and running. But real quick over here, can we get two more of these living wood twigs? And with that, can we get ourselves a wand of the forest? We can. And you can choose what petals you use here. The uh, the petal you choose will change the color of the wand of the forest. It doesn't have any practical effect. It just looks different. We're going to go with magenta and black. And so now what we should be able to do is we should be able to set up a very basic mana generation system which for our purposes is really all that we need essentially what we're going to do we're going to put down our mana pool let's say right about here we're going to put down our mana spreader let's say right about here and then you can move this by default you'll see that this is pointing into the mana pool so you'll see that when i hover over the mana spreader with my wand of the forest the mana pool lights up meaning it's connected if you wanted to put your mana spreader a little further afield by default it won't be connected, but you can shift right click on the mana spreader and then shift right click on the mana pool. And now you'll see it's connected even on the diagonal. For now though, I think we can have it just here. It looks a bit better. And we can then throw down our end of flame like this. If you put down the end of flame after you put down the mana spreader, it uh, has not connected. So all you have to do, shift right click, shift right click. And now this is connected to here and this is connected to here. Cool. And essentially all we have to do now is give fuel to the end of flame. Unfortunately, unlike other mods, Batania does not have any interfaces. And so in order to give fuel to the end of flame, we have to just drop fuel nearby. For example, if I take some of these oak planks, I just drop them down on the floor next to the end of flame, you will see it pick up those planks and it will light on fire. It will then begin sending mana to the mana spreader. As you can see here, when we hover over the mana spreader with the wand of the forest, you'll see mana kind of building up in the mana spreader. And once it gets enough mana, it then shoots it over to the mana pool. And that is where we can look at getting the mana powder from earlier, because ideally we should be able to take any kind of dye that we have. In our case, we've got a lot of black dye. And if we go and drop that black dye into the mana pool, assuming we have enough mana, which we do, as we can tell by the little tick in the middle there, it's gonna convert that black dye into mana powder. And then we can do the same again. We can take our mana powder, drop it in, and we get blaze powder. Nice. So now we basically need to do that a few more times to get more blaze powder. Once we have four, we should be able to get the blaze DNA. And then from there, of course, we can spawn blazes because we do already have nether ward. And so it really shouldn't be too difficult here for us to get a fair amount of blaze powder and therefore quite a lot of blaze DNA. The, uh, the speed upgrades, they do require blaze rods unfortunately instead of just blaze powder another reason that we do want to get the blaze b is that we also need to get a diamond b at some point sooner rather than later as well because one thing that i would like to do 
is get a, a couple of storage drawers down for all of the different resources that we're generating via our centrifuge system. Because right now we're obviously kind of just backing up in this chest and all I've been doing currently is manually moving that stuff over into these chests here, which does work and will work for a little while, but you can see already we're starting to fill up on things like beeswings. If I start moving over all of the gold that we have in here now, we're gonna start to fill up on gold and it's gonna be a better solution if we can get multiple storage drawers down Ideally, if we get multiple storage drawers down, we would also like to get a draw controller. This is a super nifty block that allows us to uh, kind of interface with all of our drawers with one easy block. However, to make it, we need a diamond. There are two ways we can go about getting a diamond. We could get the diamond B, which is a blaze B and a coal B. Of course, we are kind of working towards that blaze B here. Of course, at that point, we would also need to get a diamond B nectar block. This requires blaze honeycomb, and coal honeycomb, both of which shouldn't be too difficult. The uh, the blaze bee, of course, requires the blaze bee nectar block, which we did just see. That should be doable. The alternative, though, that we could try if we're feeling somewhat lucky, is we could try using this uh, somewhat derpy-looking fishy bee. If we get the fishy bee, which I believe we can just get with a uh, a fishy bee DNA, we could then spawn this in. The fishy bee works on prismarine. Prismarine we can get with organic water and cobblestone. This is very doable. And then from there, if we process the fishy honeycomb, there is a 1% chance that we get diamonds. So approximately one in every 100 fishy honeycomb would give us a diamond, which I think is probably gonna be the faster route for us. There we go, our Colby is, uh, is free. Let me go and grab him before he flies off the edge. Hello, my friend. Goodbye, thank you. Uh, but we could give that a go, and I think that's probably well worth trying. We also wanna keep an eye on that obsidian bee, which I think... I was gonna say it should be in here somewhere, but it looks like he might have left. Oh no, he's here. Okay, how long you got left? You've got like 240 seconds, that's fine. Okay, cool. So in that case then, we need to get some kind of fish because to make the fishy bee, we need a fish first. And the fish here, we can get in two ways. We can get via a, um, a fishing rod. We could try and just do some casual fishing inside of a pool of water. That might not be a terrible solution. Alternatively, we can also use the uh, strainer as well. If we get a fisherman strainer, we can place that into a uh, strainer and then use that to acquire some bees. That does require bamboo, which we don't have. Is there an easy way for us to get bamboo? That is a good question. There might be some bamboo actually over in our seed chest. I feel like we did get bamboo from our earlier CD endeavors. We did. We only got one. However, just like before, we should be able to set this up with a botany pot and acquire an infinite amount of it. Never mind, the Twitch chat is right here. The bamboo grows faster if we run by it. And you can also harvest it very quickly as well, which is fantastic. So yeah, you can just place this down and then just sprint around it and it very, very quickly grows very, very tall. And then you can just harvest it and at that point, it's not really worth getting any kind of botany pot for it because this is always gonna be much, much faster. Cool, so let's take that bamboo and let's see about crafting up that fisherman's strainer. And then from there, we just need a regular strainer base, this guy right here. For that, we're just missing a hopper. Do we have enough bricks? We totally do, nice, cool. Let's do this, let's do this. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that this requires water on top. Okay, so in that case, all we need to do is grab some water from our sink, and then we need to kind of bury this in the ground, ideally. So what we'll do is we'll place this here, we'll grab some stone, and we'll just do something like this. So we have a place to kind of put the strainer down. So if I put the strainer here, there is water on top of it. If I put the mesh inside, it's gonna begin, hopefully, doing its thing. It does require bits, and I probably should have looked into what the bit costs before I started doing this because if the bait is prohibitively expensive, then this might not work. Oh, we can get a bait using a garden trowel. I actually remember doing this, sure. So I think in order to get the bait here, we just need to throw down some dirt like this. We then break it with the garden trowel. And I think there's a chance of getting a worm from doing that. So first things first, do we have any more 
dirt. We do. We got plenty of dirt. Also, real quick, I don't think I mentioned it for the people watching on YouTube, but uh, we did figure out that uh, if you use a regular hoe and not a karma, you can actually use the ultimine to, to till a bunch of coarse dirt at once. So if you hold down the ultimine key and then right click, it will till all of the dirt at once. And then you can just go ahead and uh, pick it all up. It makes getting dirt a lot faster using the coarse dirt method, which is what I've been doing uh, thus far. And so for now, let's go ahead and grab our wand. And then let's see about getting down a bunch of dirt here. And then if we break all of it, I don't know if the ultimate is going to work here, but if we do this, it totally does. Look at that. We've got 11 worms. Cool. So we'll take those worms and we'll place them into our strainer base. And ideally, that should begin getting us stuff. We only need the one fish. We can leave the rest going. We'll get some more fish going forward, which is perfect. It also looks like that zombie just spawned on top of my crafting table. <laughs> that was very odd. Let me uh, press F7 here. It did not spawn on top of the crafting table. It probably spawned over here. Let's do that. And back over here, we should now be able to take that raw fish and use it to make the fishy DNA. Of course, for that, we just need one more standard B DNA, which we should have over in here. And then back over here, we'll drop that in with our fish. And that should be everything for some fishy DNA. Once we have that, again, this thing pollinates on prismarine so we want to get the organic water the organic water is seed and water so seeds we have we got the monas and over here we do have some water but i don't know if we quite have enough that's uh, actually not a problem though of course because i'm a fool and we have unlimited water already connected so let's throw the seeds in here and in terms of making the prismarine which jar do we need no heat and the organic water is also no heat cool so let's see if we can't get some organic water start once that's done we have our fishy b dna and the twitch chat has pointed out to me here that we don't actually need to get the prismarine i'm a fool i've looked at the wrong thing in jei the fishy bee just requires a flower so any flower will do the trick the recipe here is how we get these prismarine bee spawn eggs and i've seen quite a few people in the discord come in and kind of ask how you get certain bees and for those who are playing along and who, who, you know, progress faster than I do, the way that you get a lot of the bees in the pack is via this transformation. For example, I see a lot of people asking about zombie bees or creeper bees. It looks like the zombie bee is acquired by getting a zombie bee spawn egg. And the zombie bee spawn egg you get via a slimy bee. The slimy bee pollinates on the zombie head and transforms that zombie head into the zombie bee spawn egg. I'll show you how it works using this prismarine here. So if we go, and the Twitch chat did make a good point here as well, actually, that we should just get another dna spawner because they're not particularly expensive it just requires one more empty dna here which just requires more clear which we can definitely make and that way we don't have to run all the way back over to our kind of mob spawner to make it happen so we'll take this and for now i'll just plop this guy down inside of our breeding room i also again should be keeping an eye out for the blaze bee which i think has managed to escape some people in the twitch chat did point out that we should probably double layer the glass on the front here so that they can't escape because i think that our obsidian bee has probably abandoned us and uh, when i say abandoned i think he's probably you know fallen off the edge and, and has entered the abyss either way uh, let's go ahead and uh, we'll put the fishy bee in here with the cobblestone bee i think that's fine we'll put this down here we'll put some kind of flower there and if i put the prismarine here as soon as we uh whoops i shouldn't have done that uh this does give me prismarine back right it does we'll put the prismarine here and as soon as the fishy bee pollinates on that prismarine block it should i think transform it into the prismarine spawn egg i don't know if it's guaranteed or if there's a chance that it happens but i think it it, it should transform it so we'll take our fishy bee and we'll go put him over in here with that prismarine it is night currently so we are gonna have to sleep before anything happens but uh, and we'll also have to uh, get some kind of flower down in there any flower will work i'll take this uh, oxy daisy right here let's do this that guy should pollinate and uh, hopefully at some point should transform that uh, that prismarine okay so the good news is that my obsidian bee was just hiding inside of the hive and it's actually a fully grown obsidian bee now which is perfect i i put the spawner down in front of the hive and that stopped the bees from getting out which is uh, is my mistake either way We've got everything set up. The fishy bee is ready to go. I am being told by the Twitch chat that the fishy bee has to kind of fly over the prismarine after it's pollinated. And so what we might want to do here to uh, to make this work is we might want to uh, to take... Oh, I didn't mean to hit it. Ah, okay, we have to get another bee. That's fine. I meant to, uh, to break the flower there. What we might have to do is move the flower to the corner 
and uh, put the prismarine on one of the sides so that the bee has like a chance to kind of fly over it after it's pollinated to uh, to transform it. Okay, so let's try this again. We'll take our uh, Magikarp bee right here and we'll go and throw him into this hive. And really what we should see is that hopefully, eventually, let's um put the prismarine down in the corner again. And then I want to break this without hurting the bee. Perfect, good. Then we'll do... Uh, we do still want some cobblestone down here, so ideally we'd pick this cobblestone up. Never mind. Uh, in that case, we'll just do this, and we will do this. We do want some cobblestone in here, of course, because we need that cobblestone in order for the cobblestone bee to pollinate. But we did get two fishy honeycombs, and I do kind of want to test my luck a little bit here, because if we are somewhat lucky, and there are also far too many uh, mobs in here, we could probably do with attempting to get rid of the grass in here. I know we've got a lot of grass inside of this uh, area, but that's causing problems for us because not only are there a lot of mobs clogging things up, but there are also eggs that are clogging things up as well. The chickens are spawning inside of the, the beehive area and they're dropping eggs and those eggs are getting picked up by the system and that's like kind of just clogging stuff up. So uh, if you could move, that would be great. For now, I'm gonna put this here. It's a very temporary solution just so the bees keep doing their thing, but we'll leave that going and we should hopefully see uh, if a prismarine spawn egg is made, it will get uh, collected by the system whilst we wait to see if that happens. Let me go and test my luck on these two fishy combs. It's very unlikely that we get a diamond from these two combs. It's only one in a hundred, but I'm feeling lucky. We didn't get any, that's fine. We got some more fish. And so basically though, now what we'll do whilst we wait for more of those fishy combs to come in, I think what we can do now is we can take some more of our uh, black petals and we can grow these to get more black dye, of course, using our shears. And then we can use that black dye over with our endo flame. If we take yet more planks, we can use that as yet more fuel to get yet more mana. And we could use that mana to get yet more blaze powder. I think we're gonna try and get quite a bit of blaze powder so we can get quite a lot of blaze spawn eggs. Okay, so we are running into a slight issue with the endo flame here, just not really producing enough mana to get a lot of mana powder. I tried dropping like a full stack of black dion and we only got a couple. So what I've gone ahead and done is I've uh, duplicated more of our brown, red, and light gray petals. And I've also got yet more wheat seeds so that over here, we can get a bunch more endo flames. Because once you have all of these, the process to make a lot of endo flames is really not too difficult. We take the water, we put it in the petal apothecary, People are gonna ask, but unfortunately you cannot pump water into the petal apothecary. So for example, getting like a fluid pipe and trying to pump from the sink into here, it just doesn't work. Uh, it's just the way the mod is set up. Over here, we're gonna do two brown, one light gray, one red. And then of course we're gonna drop in our seed. But now all we have to do to make more of these is take a bucket of water, put it in here, double right click, drop the seed. And we can kind of repeat that process as much as we like. And we're gonna to continue to get even more endo flames until we run out of petals basically and we're going to take all those endo flames we're going to place them down over by the mana spreader because the more endo flames you have the more mana you can make the more fuel is going to be burned as well but given that our fuel is just wood i think that's going to be completely fine we are now at a point where the mana spreader is the bottleneck on transferring mana because you'll see here this endo flame is filling up on mana and that's because the mana spreader here is full it can only move mana so fast i think that's for the most part fine because as soon as we run out of fuel, it does burn through the planks quite quickly. As soon as the fuel runs out, that mana will get sent over. And we could put another mana spreader down if we wanted to, but for the most part, I think this should be fine. So if I do this now, we can get a ton of mana powder, and then we can turn that into a ton of blaze powder. Cool. And then we can take that blaze powder, of course. We can also take our nether wart, which we have over here, and we can start using that to produce a ton of blaze DNA. Let's get even more of these, you know, we'll get more mana powder and we'll get even more blaze powder. It looks like we are out of uh, mana. That's fine. We don't have enough mana now, I should say, to transform the uh, mana powder into blaze powder, but that's all right. We've got nearly a stack of blaze powder. So let's go make a couple of blaze DNA and then let's start killing those blazes to see if we can't get some blaze rods. Okay, so we've got three blaze DNA here and more is being made, but Chat has made a good point here in that we might be able to put luck onto our Tinker Sword, which we do have, but we're not carrying with us, in order to uh, increase the amount of blaze rods that we get from the blazes we kill. In order to do this, in order to apply the luck modifier, it used to be the case that you could just apply lapis to a tool to give it luck. Unfortunately, in the newer versions of Tinkers, it's a little bit more expensive, and it does require an ability slot, which is not the same as a standard modifier slot. Previously, we used one of our upgrades to give it, um, or we were going to use one of our upgrades maybe, to apply nether quartz 
you'll see there is only one ability slot, but we should be able to use that ability slot to give the sword here look. To do that though, we do need to get an anvil. You can't apply this inside of a Tinker Station. The Tinker's anvil is more expensive, but I think it is doable. It requires the Tinker Station, or not, we could do this recipe down here actually. Um, it's just four blocks of seared brick with four blocks of metal. I think any metal might work. Let me check and see if like a block of iron works. Um, potentially even a block of gold, because I feel like we might actually have more gold than iron. We do, we've got more nickel than iron as well. Can I use this though in the making of a Tinker's Anvil? The answer appears to be no. I think that's because it needs to be an alloy of some persuasion. So we've got like bronze, we've got Invar. Invar could be a decent choice for us because we do have nickel and we do have iron. And so if we wanted to get three blocks of Invar, that means we need 27 Invar in total, which means we could probably do with maybe like 20 iron and 10 nickel. That's going to get us 30 Invar. And then we could pull that out into uh, just over three Invar blocks. All right, and not too long later, we've got just over three blocks of Invar. Let's start pulling those out. And then in terms of making the actual look upgrade, we need two blocks of lapis, which thankfully we can do, one and two. We also need, uh, I think it was three copper ingots, two copper ingots, and then one corn flour. I do believe that we have a uh, corn flour from our uh, bone milling. I think I saw one at the back of our little garden over there. So we'll go and harvest that and use it in the production of this lapis here. Just as soon as we get our third block of invar. Let me go check. Do I have, yeah, there's a couple of corn flowers actually. We can just uh, harvest this one. I think that's another one by the back there as well. That's fine. Uh, you can just bone meal any kind of grass for a chance to get these. Shouldn't be too difficult. Perfect. All right, do we have our third invar? We do. The next question is, do we have enough seared brick? The answer there, unfortunately, is just ever so slightly no, because we need uh, a little bit more. Do we have some more grout? Not really, but that's also not a big issue because we can make more with sand and gravel. Of course, all of our sand and gravel is still over here for the time being, but uh, we'll go grab some and we'll get a little bit more seared brick for the anvil. And a few seared bricks later, boom. And that should be everything for the Tinker's Anvil. We need this Invar version. And ideally, we're gonna go with uh, this recipe right here. I thought I had enough seared bricks. Apparently that's not the case. Thankfully, we can make more. Perfect. So let's go and slap this down on the line over here. Perfect. We can still access everything from the top, which is good. And then we're going to throw in our sword along with two blocks of lapis, two copper, one corn flour. And that should give us the look modifier that should hopefully increase the number of mob drops we get from killing mobs. And I believe that's what it says if we hover over it. Uh, it gives you more nice things when mining or killing mobs. Perfect. There are different tiers of look that you can... Add. I believe there's like a look two and a look three, but I think they are more expensive. Yeah, there's look, luckier, and luckiest. Luckier is two gold ingots, one gold carrot, and two ender pearls. This could be doable. The carrot, I don't know if we got any carrot or carrot seeds from the uh, the seed ore, but this could be doable. And then it's just a case of getting ender pearls. This might not be too difficult to do. And then luckiest is a little bit more pricey. The rose gold is not too bad. It's just uh, gold and copper in the smeltery. The diamond, of course, we're still trying to get. Speaking of which, I do have some more fishy combs here. Let's do a little bit more uh, diamond gambling over with the manual centrifuge. Today is not our day. We did not get any <laughs> diamonds from that, which is also kind of to be expected. But let us go ahead and see here if we can't get ourselves a, uh, a blaze rod. So if I do this, I'm hopeful the blaze, yeah, shouldn't be able to escape there. That's standard. And then hopefully, look at that, blaze rod. Nice. I don't know how good the looting modifier is. Like, I don't know what kind of percentage chance increase we get. But we got four blaze rods from three blazers, which I think is pretty good. So uh, real quick, let's keep doing that. Let's see if we can't get 18 blaze rods, because if we can, we can then use those to get the um, the blaze nectar block, and then we can use the blaze bee to get unlimited blaze rods going forward, which uh, I think would be ideal. All right, so it took a few more blaze spawn DNA, like we had to make more than what we had, but making more was fairly straightforward, and we now have 18 blaze rods, and so we can craft those up, and that's gonna get us the blaze mesh. Speaking of the blaze mesh, as for the blaze bee, 
that was where we needed the obsidian bee, right? So the obsidian bee was here. We need to breed that with the lava bee, which we do now have ready to go. Unfortunately, we did lose our obsidian because our obsidian is now placed down inside of the hive, which is not ideal. And so we're going to have to grab another bucket of water and another bucket of lava to get another block of obsidian out of our smeltery. Thankfully, that should not be too difficult for us to do. We still have lava in our magmatic dynamos. And so let's do a quick one of these. And as soon as that obsidian is ready, we can pull it out and we can use that to breed together our nether bee. And then of course we have to wait for the nether bee to grow before we can then breed it with the gold bee to get the pigman bee. For that, we are going to need nether rank. Nether rank, it looks like we can make with another kind of cobblestone generator. We'll take a look at that again in just a second here. Real quick, let me take four cobblestone for the lava bee. And let's see about breeding these two guys together. The obsidian bee has gone back into the hive. That is fine. They should come out in just a second because it is almost their time. All right, there the bees are. Perfect. Let's do a quick one of these and let's do a quick one of these. One, two, three, four. That should get us our nether bee. And I'm being told by the Twitch chat that there is a bit of a cheesy way using the bee box that we looked at right at the start of the pack to kind of speed up this whole process so in order to get the bee box we do need some waxed planks and the wax planks are thankfully just planks and beeswax right now all of our beeswax is in block form i crafted them all into blocks to free up space inside of our chests because i was moving over yet more stuff out of here you'll see this keeps filling up and so the uh, the beeswax does take up a lot of space i was then just crafting that beeswax uh, into beeswax blocks to free up space and i'll continue to do that over in here, just so it doesn't take up quite as much space in our chests. Either way, that should almost be everything we need for the bee box. And I'm being told by the Twitch chat that if you pick up a bee in the bee box, it kind of resets its data. So I'm being told that if I pick up the Bebe nether bee here, that if I then go and put it down, look at that, it comes out as an adult bee, which is crazy. On top of that, I'm also being told that we can kind of get rid of the um, the breeding delay as well. So right now you'll see this obsidian bee has a 233 second breeding cooldown. If we pick it up and put it back down, it completely resets the bee and there's now no breeding cooldown on the bee. That is gonna make our lives so much easier in terms of processing these bees because it means we no longer have to wait for the breeding cooldown and it also more importantly means that we don't have to wait for the bees to grow up, which takes usually like 20 minutes. And so now, Getting the pigman bee should be a lot easier because we already have a fully grown nether bee. We just need to get that nether egg and this nether egg should be pretty straightforward. It looks like we can actually make it in the jars. I was looking at this. This might be doable, but blue ice might be a little tricky to get. Whereas this recipe looks super straightforward. One redstone dust and one bucket of lava. We'll throw the redstone dust over into the chest. We'll steal a bucket of lava out of our magmatic dynamo and we'll go and throw that into one of these jars and then over inside of, I think it was here, we should now be able to make ourselves some nether egg. Never mind, it's over in the zero heat jar. Nether egg, start. There's our nether egg. Let's go give the nether egg to our nether bee along with gold to a gold bee. Okay, so we do have gold bees. However, they are currently being used to make honeycomb. So we have to go and grab one of those also that we could probably do with grabbing a gold ingot as well. So we can actually do this without having to come back to our crafting interface. Let's grab him before he goes away. All right, let's do you, you, and you. Perfect. Let's get our bee box at the ready. There is our piglin bee. We pick that up, put it back down. Look at that. Pigman bee is now fully grown. You love to see it. And so now it's just a case of grabbing one of our redstone bees and then giving the redstone bee, I assume, some redstone. Yes, and then we're going to give the pigman bee nine gold nuggets. That is completely fine. The redstone bees, Isaac, are right at the front of the apartment complex. They are over here. Let's take you. Let's pop you in over here. Let's go grab one redstone and nine gold nuggets. Boom, you have the redstone. And then where are you? You're over here. We have to give him all nine of these nuggets. Perfect. All right, that should be a blaze bee. Nice, again, let's get the box ready. There's too many bees in here. We should definitely uh, try and fix that. But we now have a fully grown blaze bee ready to go. And so now, as we saw earlier, the blaze bee nectar block is made using 
two blaze meshes, hence why we have all of the blaze meshes, and then we need 18 redstone honeycomb, which I think we should have in here. I think we've got a ton of redstone honeycomb. We do indeed, so we'll do something like this. We'll get two of these. The blaze meshes we have are fantastic. Let's put you and you in there, and then, as we saw earlier, we can take uh, honey bottles and craft those with buckets to get honey, and then from there, we can drop that honey in over here, and now, using our new faster little heating system here, we should be able to craft this much faster than before. Look at that, eight seconds is all it takes. And we have our blaze bee nectar block. Nice, that is very quick. So now we can go and put this guy down into one of these rooms. Which room do I wanna put him in? Probably in here, maybe. We are gonna need some more, whoops, that's not what I want to do. We are going to need some more bee glass to kind of uh, block off this little pathway right here. And again, like I said earlier, I think we definitely want to get rid of the grass <laughs> inside this apartment building so that these mobs stop spawning. And so, real quick, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna get some more bee glass to, uh, to allow us to pass into the center room for maintenance, whilst also preventing the, the blaze bees from getting in here. Uh, one thing we should also do, actually, whilst we are doing this, also, we should use our sword, Isaac. Um, what we should do, though, is we should also look at getting the uh, coal bee nectar block as well. We were looking at that earlier. The uh, coal bee nectar block just requires the lava honeycomb and the wood honeycomb. I think we have enough of both of those now to make this work. So over here, uh, I've been taking kind of these out periodically, so we should have two blocks worth of that. We do indeed. And we should also have the wood combs as well. We do indeed. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and get yet another bucket of honey. And then what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and put down uh, both the blaze and the coal bees inside of that room and get the blaze and coal honeycombs producing. I think we can also probably look at uh, stopping the production of lava honeycombs now, because I don't think we're gonna need those going forward, and potentially the same for the wood for the time being, because uh, for the most part, they just serve to clog up our system, because right now, do we not have, oh, I'm in the wrong jar, as always, uh, coal, B. But yeah, they just kind of serve to clog up our system currently, because the wood honeycombs can't be processed in the centrifuges, and, and whilst the lava honeycombs can be processed, they just produce a liquid, which is not ideal, because we don't currently have the uh, system in place to actually deal with that liquid. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take our uh, coal bee nectar block, we'll get coal and we will get uh, blaze bees set up. And I'm also gonna get rid of all the grass inside of that building to prevent any passive mobs spawning there in the future. Okay, so we've gotten rid of all of the grass inside of our little bee apartment zone here. And we've got our coal and blaze bee working in here. And of course we've got uh, our vacuum letter doing its work in here. And I've picked up the lava and the would be. So those guys are no longer doing their thing. It looks like we are processing the combs faster than we're producing them now, finally, which is good. So we do have 15 fishy combs. I am gonna quickly see if we can get a diamond from these, but the good news is, is that we're actually pretty close to being able to make a diamond bee just outright because the diamond bee here is just a coal bee and a blaze bee bred together, which of course we have now. And then in terms of actually using the diamond bee, we just need to get a diamond bee nectar block, which is just coal honeycomb and blaze honeycomb with honey. And so if we can kind of intercept some of the coal and blaze honeycombs, which currently are not being processed, which is good, we can use those to make the diamond honey block and it's gonna get us diamonds that way. But I do wanna quickly see if we don't get a little bit of diamond from this. I don't know if we've quite done a hundred honeycombs yet and of course that's not how it works it's not like if you do 100 you're guaranteed to get a diamond that's not how percentages work still didn't get any which is unfortunate it wasn't likely to work but i thought it was worth a try either way let us quickly then in that case grab ourselves uh, two blaze rods and one coal in order to get that diamond bee so we probably should have done this before we move the bees into their new little apartment zone but let me go check if that honeycomb has been harvested yet do we have any Blaze, we do have some blaze. Do we have any coal? We don't have any coal, which is unfortunate. That is kind of fine though. It's gonna come in sooner rather than later. I assume it's almost there in terms of honey. It's a three out of five, so it shouldn't take too long. And we can probably, whilst we wait, also look at getting a few more blaze rods the old fashioned way, because we do still have some excess uh, blaze DNA over in the chest here. And I think that's gonna be worth using just so that we can get some more blaze rods and we can use those blaze rods to try and speed up our modular routers. Okay, so a little bit of the coal honeycomb has been processed and we did get two more blaze rods from killing our last two blazers with the blaze DNA. And so hopefully in here, we should be able to, um, to breed these guys to get our diamond bee. 
We just need to wait for them both to uh, to pop out here. And then at that point, I think we're good to go. The whole system here is actually running a lot more smoothly now. The uh, vacuum is empty. We've processed all of the honeycombs. Hello, my friends. I'll do one, two, and uh, whoops, and three. And that should get us our diamond bee. We want to pick that diamond bee up, of course, with the bee box. Perfect. Run no risk at all of that bee being uh, let loose if it escapes. We'll put that down over here for now. Um, and at this point, we kind of need to wait until we have enough coal honeycomb and enough blaze honeycomb to make the nectar block, which kind of just means intercepting those as they are made, which is fine. And so now our big problem is just storage. Our chests are full, and this chest over here is also full, which is not ideal. There is a little temporary solution we can do. We can obviously upgrade the uh, chest that is being used. If we do a uh, wood to iron chest upgrade, this is from the uh, iron chests mod. This allows us to upgrade our chest a little bit and is gonna give us some temporary kind of respite in terms of freeing this up. But of course, the real thing we need to do is we need to get some storage drawers for all of our kind of core resources. We also need to take most of the excess combs out of here, like all this gold, all this uh, copper, and we need to get those run through the system so they're not taking up space unnecessarily in our chests. So I think for most of the resources that we're producing, we're probably going to want to actually have compacting drawers instead of just regular storage drawers. Compacting drawers are super nifty in that they allow you to view and interact with your items in multiple different forms. So we'll make 21 pistons. That's going to allow us to make 10 of these compacting drawers. To do that, we are going to need more regular storage drawers. And for more regular storage drawers, we're also going to need yet more oak. So real quick, let's take some of this. Do we have any wood honeycomb? We do, because we can use this, of course, to make logs, and then we can use those logs to make planks, and of course we can use those planks to make chests, and we can use those chests to make storage drawers. I do think it is probably most wood efficient to make the two by two storage drawers, and that gets us four of these. We'll go for four, eight, and that's going to allow us to make even more of these, and essentially what we can do now is we can put these down, and I'm probably gonna put all of the drawers over here. We'll maybe have the draw controller in the bottom corner. So we'll imagine the draw controller is potentially gonna go here, and then we'll start to throw down all of our compacting drawers, and uh, we'll make sure they all touch the draw controller, but then we can begin moving our resources out. So what we could do is we could make a bunch of link cable, and we could put all of that link cable onto each and every one of these storage drawers to give us access to them via the system. That would work. The preferred solution though is not this, by the way. Sometimes this does happen. We don't really want to be able to access our iron in block and then compressed block form. Ideally, we want to be able to access our iron in nugget ingot and block form. So if you craft the nuggets and then put those in, the uh, the drawer usually figures it out. Whereas sometimes if you have compressed blocks, it doesn't. There's no compressed copper, apparently, because that worked just fine. Uh, there's no tin nuggets, apparently, because those are not available there. But essentially, once we connect these up to the system, it's going to allow us to access all of our iron in all three forms. And so going forward, we won't have to worry about crafting iron nuggets or iron blocks. We can just take them straight out of the drawer in block or nugget form, which is perfect. And again, uh, ideally, once we get the draw controller down, we can then just put one, uh, whoops, one link cable onto that one draw controller, and it will give us access to everything in all of the uh, connected drawers, which is perfect. We can also do the same thing with redstone and lapis and coal and all that kind of good stuff as well. If we take, for example, our redstone out of here, it gives us the option of pulling the redstone out in dust form or in block form. Again, very useful. There's a lot of recipes that use redstone blocks. And the same is also true with lapis and with coal. Both of those are also usable in block form and it's gonna be very nice to have. And the only thing left to do then really is to get drawers for some of our other items. I do think it's probably also worth having a compacting drawer for the beeswanks. Again, it saves on space. And the uh, beeswanks is craftable into a compressed form. So real quick, let's get another couple of compacting drawers here. How many can we make? The answer is zero, but that's because all of our iron is now over in here. Let's grab a few more of those. And then let's do a quick one of these. Perfect. Uh, let's do this and we'll start a new row here, I think. And we can probably put the wax in on that top row. So if I take the wax blocks and the regular wax, we should be able to put both of those in, I think. Yeah, and you'll see that you can put the wax in as well as the wax blocks. Very handy. These also have a ton of storage. Unlike a regular storage drawer, this can hold up to 128 stacks. A regular storage drawer, one of these guys right here, can only hold up to 32 stacks. So it can hold four times more than a regular storage drawer, which is just an extra kind of cherry on top there. 
And we essentially want to send all of our wares from these chests round to there. We could also do, I guess, with getting a, um, a draw for blocks of honey as well. I don't think that the blocks of honey are going to require a compacting draw. I don't believe there's any way to kind of downcraft it. At the same time, though, I feel like at this point, we might as well kind of stick to our wall of compacting draws and just use those as opposed to the regular draws, at least for our initial resources although for that it does look like we're going to need even more wood and so i'll quickly chop down some more wood here and we'll see about getting actually you know what temporarily we don't have another resource yet so let me move this guy up to the top just so we can have all of our stuff kind of organized i like having my ingots in the middle my gems down here at the bottom and then we'll have bee stuff i guess up at the top how many honey blocks do we have we've got 48 let me take those out and let's whack those in here yeah there's no way to downcraft those but that's fine it could still hold a ton of honey blocks and yeah, right now we're manually moving all these in. Uh, we'll probably get rid of the fishy bee. I don't think we really need that going forward. Uh, it was kind of just to try and get the diamonds, but I don't think that we were actually successful in getting diamonds, unfortunately. And yeah, I think next time, chat, we can come back and we can look at hopefully getting this actually like set up the way we want to. Because again, for it to work, we do need to get enough blaze and coal honeycomb, which ideally, I guess, means we probably want to stop processing that. I did notice that we had some uh, blaze honeycomb come through. We don't want to process that blaze honeycomb. We want to uh, make sure we kind of intercept it and use it for making the uh, diamond bee nectar block. Next time we'll come back, we'll throw down the diamond bee nectar block. We will get hopefully our first diamonds and we can use that to get ourselves a draw controller, which will then allow us to hook all of this up. And we'll probably get another modular router. Um, unfortunately, the simple storage network mod has been uh, kind of kneecapped a little bit in this version of the pink to where we don't have access to the import or export cables. Uh, we kind of have to work further on and get to refined storage or applied energetics before we can get into that. But what we can do is we can put another router down over near to the draw controller, and then we can just see the items kind of fly across the base over to the draw controller, and then they'll be accessible in the system, which is perfect. And the drawers have so much space that it's not going to be a problem for quite some time. And then next time, chat, we can come back and we can look and progressing even further, I think we're probably going to have to start with some astral sorcery because people did point out to me that uh, if we want to get a steel bee, the steel bee itself, not too difficult, but uh, in order to get the steel bee nectar block, we actually need to have steel already. We need two blocks of steel to make the steel bee nectar block, and we make steel in the smeltery with molten starlight infused iron and molten mana infused coal. And so we are going to have to do some more Britannia, and we're going to have to do some Astral Sorcery in order to get this uh, Starlight Infused Iron here. Both of those on the cards, I think, for the next episode. But that is, of course, a problem for future Isaac. For now, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this episode of Sky Bees 2 there.